Hey everybody, so today we're going to go over a question that I received through the YouTube form uh, regarding PDF creation using uh, Apex and Visual Force. Uh, but real quick, before we get into that, just a quick service announcement that on my website, chrismarquez.com, you can see that there is a link to the YouTube form which you can use to go ahead and ask me questions related to Salesforce. Whether that be a question you have regarding a topic you don't understand or some or you need some help on some project that you're not sure quite how to how to complete. And also on the same note, I do have a new newsletter now that I've recently started. And the purpose of this newsletter will be to basically either answer your guys' questions that you send me through the YouTube form on here or to highlight some things that I've been learning within this within the Salesforce ecosystem. So this is all completely free. Uh, I would suggest to go ahead and subscribe because I'll be sending out emails every so often regarding Salesforce stuff. And as always, if you don't feel like going to my website, you can go to my YouTube channel on, in the about section and there are the links there as well. So with that said, let's get into it. So the question I got the other day is from, I believe the name is Tan May. Hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. And the question was, I am generating PDF from a Salesforce digital page but the table which I have to make is table format, but non-formatted. Uh, the example is one side would be company address, below it would be the date, and on the other side would be contact, and that the document is for sales rep meeting prospects. Uh, can we make this type of format in a Visual Force page? And he, he or she did go ahead and uh, send me the template, and I was given permission to show it to you guys. So here it is. As you can see here, this is just a, it looks like it's a table with a bunch of different things here. And I guess the the problem they were having is probably has to do with the top right here, where it's it looks like it's uh, two columns, but on the right hand side it just has uh, one big section, whereas the other one is split into two different sections. So yeah, I think we can go ahead and help you get that started. But I just wanted to point out something very quickly. Um, it looks like this page or this document it's fairly static, right? And what I mean by that is it looks like each each section is probably just like one field that might be from like an account or a contact or a lead. I, I don't really know. And I don't have the, the background info to make those calls. But like I said, most of it looks like it's just a static thing where it's not like we want to display a table that is dynamic based upon how many leads exist on an account. Uh, perhaps this last section might be something along those lines where depending on how many records exist, we want to see one for each, uh, a row for each of those uh, line items or records rather. But and I, re I bring this up because I have made a video in the very far past, which is actually, I think, my first Salesforce video I ever made on this exact same topic. And I'll go ahead and link this specific video there because I think it might be helpful. Uh, but in this video here, uh, what we went ahead and did was we created a uh, Visual Force page that is rendered as a PDF that basically takes, I believe it was all of the, uh, all of the leads, I believe. I, I, for, I forget what the, uh, what we were actually using. Maybe we can see here in our code. If we go back real quick. Yeah. So we take all of the opportunities rather, and we just, uh, all the opportunities are from a certain account and we just display them as a vis as a PDF. So, uh, that's basically what I mean by dynamic, right? Where we don't, we don't really know how many opportunities might exist on an account and it's not really relevant to us. All we want is to grab them all. Uh, via a query and display them in the visual force page so as you can see here uh this account gene point had uh, two opportunities that i guess were invoiced so that's kind of the dynamic nature and the reason why i bring that up is because if we go back to our document here while it's not complex it uh, recreating this in visual force is probably going to take you a while and quite a bit of CSS to go along with it. And I kind of have like a little trick that I learned a long time ago that might be useful to you guys. Uh, it's not perfect and there are drawbacks, which we'll get into, but very quickly, here's, here's kind of what we can do. So we can go ahead and download this, uh, Microsoft document. So I'm going to go ahead and just download it as a template. And if we had Microsoft word on the desktop, what you could do is do a save as, and then choose the HTML type. But if you don't have Microsoft word, uh, that's fine. You can also do it with Google Docs, which I'll show in a second. So as you can see here, um, I opened up a Google Doc and I basically just uh, clicked on the file and open and I opened up that Microsoft Word document that was already on my computer. And I just had it open and show as a Google Doc, which is basically the same thing, right? So what I was saying is you can go ahead and on the file right here, go down to where it says download and then have it be downloaded as a web page. So I'll go ahead and do that and we'll just choose 
for it to download in the downloads folder that's fine uh i'm going to go ahead and open up where it exists and we'll go ahead and just extract the zip file and as you can see it's going to open it's going to be extracted into a template folder and as you can see here we now have a template.html so if i go ahead and open this as uh, using visual studio code you'll see that we have like a thousand lines of HTML basically. But what this ends up producing is essentially that form. So if I go ahead and now open this up as Brave Browser to open this up, we should see here that this is basically the uh, the template that we have, but now it's in HTML. So we can kind of go ahead and use that, right? And kind of before we go any deeper, the reason why I said that there's some downsides is to it is because as you can see here, there's a lot of code to basically recreate this uh document right? like we have like a bunch of css and it might not be as efficient as if you just did it yourself right and as you can see here like the the css classes they have like weird names like dot c335 and i'm sure like the html itself once we get done here is going to have just like a bunch of tags that might not really be necessary so it just kind of seems like a waste but uh, here's a very important part this i think is very useful if you're not very familiar with visual force or html or uh, css classes right like you can use this as a starting point to create the document for yourself and that's kind of why i wanted to show this in this video today instead of recreating that thing from scratch because if you're not very familiar with it well at least you can use this as a starting point and that's kind of what we're going to do today so what i'm going to go ahead and do is i'm just going to go ahead and copy all of this and we'll kind of just throw it into a visual force page and see how far we can get um, and I think for today, I'm just going to use the dev console because I'm kind of lazy to create a visual, uh, create a visual studio code project and, you know, connect it to my org and all that. So what I've gone, gone ahead and done in my trollhead org is I created an account review view visual force page and an account review um, apex class just to kind of show at least just to quickly show how we can pull things from our org and display them in this visual force page. So starting off with our visual force page, as you can see here. I already uh, defined the controller as the account review controller that we just created. It's going to render as a PDF that this is a very important thing to do here. If you don't do this, it's just going to show this as a visual force page. So ensure you do that. And because I want more control over this page, I'm going to say the apply HTML tag is false. Apply body tag is false and to not show the header. Basically, what this means is when the visual force page is rendered, I uh, usually like there's the proprietary engine in the background will go ahead and create HTML text where you create the body text for you. And you're saying that I don't want it to do that. So hopefully that makes sense. But anyways, uh, in here, basically I'm, uh, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to go ahead and paste all that code that was auto generated for us. And I'll go ahead and highlight everything and just format it by hitting uh, shift tab, which works nicely in the dev console. And then we'll go ahead and hit save. And I'm not sure if we're going to have any problems, Probably not. It looks like it saved just fine. So now what we can do is let's just preview it by hitting the preview button right here and see what we kind of get, right? So basically, it looks like we're pretty much almost done, right? Like it looks pretty close to the actual document that was sent to me. And as you can see here, uh, yeah, like there's some issues. Like it looks like this is, was created as an image, which I think if we go back to our uh, document that was sent to us, it looks like it was text maybe not i think they used an image instead of text right here it, lo it looks like a drawing so that's probably why it was created as an image and right here as well this looks like it's another image right here which we can easily import that into our visual force page uh so that's not a big deal right but point is we're really close to the end goal and like how i said earlier i'm not suggesting that you just use this and then basically use it as a deliverable um, instead of really understanding it, uh, what I'm saying is use this as a starting point if you're not very familiar with Visual Force, HTML, and how to format your own things, right? So, because like how I said, this is not, I'm sure there's like a lot of styling that's not really necessary or that might be redundant, um, but it's a good starting point. So, what I think I'll do is let's kind of go ahead and clean up a little bit of it. So, starting with this right here, I, I think this is probably where that account review header was at. And it looks like it is being displayed as an image, which probably doesn't need to be. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to go ahead and get rid of all of this right here, uh, just to clean this, this up. And then right here, we can just say something like uh, account review, which is what was needed in the first place. And let's go ahead and create a CSS class. Uh, I'm going to call this like heading or something along those lines. Uh, like so and it's going to have a color which we'll figure out in a little bit and maybe like the font size 
will be like 28 uh, pixels. And I'm, I'm not going to try to like recreate it, you know, uh, pixel perfect, but we'll get close enough just to give you guys an idea of how we can go ahead and start modifying what we what was auto generated for us. Uh, the color, I, I did kind of cheat a little bit and grab the uh, CSS uh, or rather the, the hexadecimal for it. So I'll go ahead and find that out. It was, I believe, 4472C4, which is like a shade of blue kind of. So we'll do that. And right here, instead of uh, using the C2 class, which doesn't tell me anything, <laughs> I'll just go ahead and replace it with heading. We'll go ahead and hit save on that. And as you can see here, uh, it already refreshed. It looks pretty decent. I mean, I'm sure the, the font styling or the font family is not the same, so we can go ahead and do that, which I'll leave that to you guys to do. Uh, but we can go ahead and do is maybe center it. So th that might not be too, might, so it might look closer to the source. Um, we could try to style it through the CSS, uh, but since Visual Force, I believe it uses like kind of like an older rendering en engine for HTML, sometimes things get kind of wonky. So I'm going to take like a, a little shortcut and just use the center tag, which is not great, but I think it will work just fine. So I'll go ahead and try that. So let's go ahead and hit save on that. And let's go ahead and look back. And as you can see here, yep, it's now in the center. So looking decent enough, right? Uh, next up, let's fix this little priority image that we had seen in our mockup. So it looks like this is just an, an actual image, right? So uh, what we can do for the for images, it's not that difficult. And because in the template folder, the zip folder, um, the folder that was unzipped, it gave us an images folder, which looks like it has that little priority arrow. What we can go ahead and do is go into our uh, trailhead org uh, right here. Uh, let's go into the setup by going to the right hand side and clicking setup right here. And I'm going to search box and look for static resources. And in the static resources, we can go ahead and click new. Basically, we're, we're just going to store that image in our static resources so we can reference it in our visual force page if, if that's not clear. Uh, so let's go ahead and give this a name. I'm going to say priority priority arrows priority arrows and then we choose the file from our desktop uh, which is this image one thing and we'll just go ahead and click on save so once that's done let's make a note of our name it's called priority arrows so i'm going to go ahead and go, go ahead and copy that so it's my, in my clipboard and i'm going to go ahead and look for where that thing might be and i think it's right here this is the source for the images image one png so let's go ahead and get rid of that and I'm going to use these weird squirrely brackets to denote that we want to reference something within our visual, within our Salesforce org. So do so squirrely brackets, then exclamation point, I believe. And then we're going to use the dollar symbol and then type out resource and then give it the name of the resource static resource that we just created. This basically tells us, Hey, go into our static resource resources and pull out where priority arrows exists. So I'm going to go ahead and hit save on this now. And with any luck, that should do it for that portion. So as you can see here, now we have our little arrow there. And sure, we can probably, you know, perhaps center it a little bit more because it looks like it's a little bit more to one side. But again, that's I'm not, I'm not trying to do pixel perfect in this video because it'll take way too long. Uh, like I said, it's mostly just to get you guys thinking about how you can utilize this auto auto generated HTML to make it your own. And I know this is like the third time I've said this, but I really would not use this code the way it was generated. Uh, like how I said, I would look at it uh, and basically try to, you know, either refactor it and use better CSS classes and better naming conventions for, for all the stuff you're seeing here, or just look at it on the side, maybe on a different monitor or different window, and then try to recreate it yourself using this as a guideline. I think that's probably the better use case here. Uh, but anyways, so once we have that, I mean, it's not looking too bad, right? Uh, but what I kind of want to do now at the end is to kind of show how we can now maybe perhaps pull some stuff from our Salesforce org into this uh, document, because that's probably what's going to be done, uh, or that's probably what the user is going to do. So that's why I made the account review controller. As you can see here, I already did some things. So basically... I create an account review controller. I have a constructor and basically what it's doing is just initializing this public account that has its getter and setter already done. And basically I'm just grabbing the billing street, billing city, billing state, 
building postal code and building country from an account and it's just hard coded which you probably wouldn't do in your thing but this is just to showcase how to grab information from uh, your org so this account variable this acc variable is going to have this information so once we have that i'll go ahead and click on hit save real quick and we can go back into account review view and now we can reference the acc variable in our visual force page so what i'm going to go ahead and do is maybe uh, looking at our document maybe we'll, we'll paste like the billing city straight city city street zip code or whatever here and we'll pop probably just keep it at that just to keep it simple uh so yeah let's go ahead in here and then let's go down to where we see company address or something so as you can see here we have our company address which is inside of, of a span inside of a paragraph tag and we could probably plop down the company address here uh to do so like how i said we use the squirrely brackets to denote that and then an exclamation point and then we can use the acc variable and we would want to pull it out as maybe like the billing street something like that and you know if you wanted to do like state as well you can have another one right there um, but for now we'll just keep the street just to keep it simple and looking not too bad i'm gonna go ahead and hit save and then let's go jump back into our thing here and as you can see here now it's uh on a separate line but still within the little table if you wanted to have like side by side by this uh you probably would have to change up your your markup a little bit probably what i would do is i would grab this and then maybe get rid of this right here and then just paste it next to where the company address isr is kind of like that and that should basically have you have it appearing on the side as you can see here now so like how i said play around with the html that is auto generated and you could probably get it to what you want it to be do i would recommend going uh, and going and looking at my video here on how to dynamically generate rows of records that you want to see in your in your pdf if, if that's a use case that you have i'll go ahead and link that this video in the description box below uh but yeah i think that's pretty much it uh let me know if you guys have any questions i think i covered everything pretty well just keep in mind uh, the fourth time and final time i'm going to say this doing this little quick little hack of auto generating the html it's great to get you guys started but just keep in mind that the html is probably going to be a little bit messy and it might not it's not going to work perfectly for you if you need to like do auto, um if you need to do dynamic generation of records which in this case just look at this video and it'll get you started on that right so yeah that's pretty much it uh subscribe to my newsletter subscribe to my youtube channel and i'll catch you guys in the next video oh if you have and if you have questions leave them down in the comment section below or hit up my youtube form and i'll see you guys later